Hey, low light at Sniper's Hide here. We're with the Teak Attack A1, and it just came back from the gunsmith. We just swapped out the factory 260 barrel. Now, a lot of questions come up. People ask me, well, why did you do that? Why did you change the barrel? There's nothing wrong with the Tika barrels. Well, accuracy-wise, they're absolutely correct. This barrel shot very well. With factory prime ammo, it was a half minute or better shooter. So why did I change it out? Well, I changed it out for a little bit shorter barrel. I changed it out for a custom Bartlin left hand gain twist barrel. And again, why did I do it? Why did I take this and swap it out? Muzzle velocity. I found that the factory Tika barrel was about 150 to 200 feet per second slower than I wanted it to be. It's a 24 inch barrel, I expected it to go a little faster and I found that my muzzle velocity was well below what I thought I needed. I have means, I had the ability to swap the barrel out in short order. The gun was only down for about 10 days, so it wasn't a big deal. Take the original barrel off, it's in great shape, nothing wrong with it. It's got probably about three, 400 rounds through it. I can use it down the road. I don't really have to sweat it. But I'm looking for the differences this custom Bartlin is gonna give me. It's gonna give me speed, which is most important. Bartlin barrels are a known commodity. I don't have to worry about accuracy. I know that's gonna be there. And then I had the ability to grab a left hand gain twist off the shelf for mile high. I've been talking about gain twist barrels and particularly going left hand in the Northern Hemisphere. So they had it on the shelf in 260. So I got a 260 left hand gain twist. Now because this just came back from the gunsmith and Mile High did a great job putting this all together for me, I'm going to run a single patch and then clean it out to make sure there's nothing, no debris or anything left over from the process of changing the barrel, threading it, and doing all the work that they did. So just a quick brush it through, and that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. Four guides in place, 6.5 caliber cleaning rod, and we have a little bit of number nine on our patch here, and we're just going to run this single patch through to make sure everything's good. So I got this here on the handle, boom, come out nice and clean, everything's good, nothing there. So still came out clean, everything, and we'll just dry it off now. Okay, let's take a look at the Tika after the barrel swap. Tika Tack A1, we swapped out the factory barrel. So what did I gain by swapping out the factory barrel? Well, right off the bat with my 260 prime ammo, I gained 100 feet per second. I went from 2710 to 2825. I also brought my SDs down. So the SDs were in the 20s. I brought them down to 12 with factory. Now here's the other plus. I took my 136 grain load, which is the Andrew McCourt custom load. It zeroes in the same place. At 800 yards, it's the same drop. I can actually take a tenth off because it's a little bit high, but I have 5.4 mils to 800 yards with the 130. I still hit the target with the 136. If I come down to 5.3, I'm all centered up. The custom loaded McCourt ammo shoots also 28.25 with a 136 grain CNR and I have an SD of 7.8. So I can interchange my custom load to the prime ammo. They'll both work and they both trend out. 1,125 yards, 9.2 mils to 1,125. Group was outstanding. I gained accuracy. I gained muzzle velocity. And it also likes a diversity in ammo better because I'm using the gain twist. The gain twists tend to work with different bullet weights better than a standard twist rifle. It brought new life into this TAC A1. I'm really digging it. The next step is I'm gonna have to pull it apart 
and I'm going to drop my trigger weight. I'm not a big fan of the way the trigger is right now, so I'm going to work on the trigger. I like the Yo Dave trigger spring. In my other Tika, I had the Yo Dave trigger spring. It's 10 bucks. How do you beat a trigger spring for 10 bucks? Make some crisp, make some nice, but I'm going to drop the weight on this and I'm going to go with it. But I, I really like the Tika as a platform. I think the Tikas are better than any Remington out there right now. Uh, it's up to you if you want to go the TAC A1. That retails around 1800 bucks. A recommendation I would make to some people is get your standard Tika, the uh, TX3, in the cheaper stock. Pull it out of that stock and put it in a chassis. You have KRG, XLR, Kdex, anything you want. There's chassis out there. Put it in a manor stock. Uh, I've seen Tikas perform really well bedded in a manners type stock, McMillan manners. So you have a lot of pluses. The other thing I like, everyone knows I'm a big Accuracy International fan. Accuracy International bolt handle from Sterk, right? So now I have the same throw as my AIs. Very similar in platform. The only negative I found is I'm not a big fan of Tika's mags, which is why I recommend another chassis. Because then you can put your that chassis and use AICS magazines, right? So you don't have to use the Tika magazine. Every now and then I get a little bit of follower screw up and, and things like that. The follower is will knock out right there and, and it's not a fan. And I've had a couple times where it's fouled trying to run it in the local competition. So I like the other chassis to use the other magazine. And, you know, again, this Tika platform is just outstanding from every way. So there you have it, the TAC A1. I highly recommend the Tikas. Listen, I swapped the barrel and I gained. It cost me in material 300 bucks and it cost me 10 days out of action with it. So not a big deal for me to switch the barrels and that's a luxury that I have. If you're shooting a 6.5, if you're shooting something that will need a barrel change in two, 3,000 rounds, well, I just knocked it out a little sooner. I still have the factory barrel, it's still great. Shoot it out, shoot, you know, shoot 2,000 rounds out of it and then swap it out. But I mean, getting 2,000 rounds out of a factory barrel in a 6.5 is not a bad thing and then you can upgrade from there but i like muzzle velocity i like the ability to switch loads and everything's in the same place so the gain twist left hand gain twist works really well the other thing my 136 cnar load uses a quarter mil less wind than the 130 prime so I can switch back and forth. If I got to shoot farther, if I got a little more wind, I can swap and I don't have to change my zero. The zeros are the same. So I can go and use this in mix and match between factory and custom load. The Teak Attack A1, big fan of it, big fan of the platform. Thanks a lot for watching.